if you like. So, but uh, we take the question. Yes, the mic. So you can you can hold the mic, um, and then the last question is the Swedish authorities in the So we just. To work in research and development in pharma for many years. I sold my companies and I retired uh, from the industry. I was having a good life. Um, then in 2020, of course, I was very concerned. Uh, I started following this um, development and I immediately became concerned with the suppression of hydroxychloroquine and other early treatments. And because um, I knew a lot about these drugs and I knew that they were safe, well understood. And the first um, first principle in medicine is to use something that you're familiar with, something that shows promise and that's very, very well characterized. So when the authorities started outright lying about it, which I knew the, the professionals were going on camera and lying openly about the, these drugs and smearing them, uh, I understood that that was something really bad was happening because I never could even imagine that they would do something like this, that they would just go openly lie about something that they knew was not true. Um, and so that's why that alerted me. I started looking into this um, more closely. I started following adverse events um, through VAERS system of CDC, the Vaccine Ad Adverse Event Reporting System. And that led me to meet a lot of people who are here today. And we started collaborating on this research and I, I've been following it ever since. <laughs>
do not have to comply with pharmaceutical regulations. That's why we see performance, and you know, that's the answer to my question to the EMA, and I know it's the same behavior from the FDA specifically. FDA is not in charge of these products. They have no mandate to regulate them, yet they pretend to the public that they do. And that's the biggest lie. They are just impersonating the regulators. And, and in, in reality, they have no regulatory control over these products. And really, neither does Pfizer. It's, it's basically a Department of Defense production. Okay, so this is a military uh, mm -hmm. order. It's so a military have, order. So they apply the military order mm -hmm. to get around the regulators. Yeah, and they're using the same exact legal framework that they use to purchase weapons and order weapons from private defense contractors. Mm -hmm. So using the same exact framework, which allows them to hide a lot of things, to keep the ingredients secret, to not disclose the IP, and not regulate them either. So you could say this is a mm -hmm. wartime yes. order. Wartime so order. Who are we having a war against? Uh -huh. Is it the people or... <laughs> Yeah, right. That's that's my question too. So, like in the U.S., uh, what was also misrepresented to the public again. So, the government told us, like they told you here, that it's a health event, it's a pandemic, it's a virus, it's a disease. Whereas the the way they organized themselves to respond to it in the U.S. was as if it was war, because they put National Security Council in charge, which is which has no health authorities on it. It's all defense and and intelligence, and they're advising U.S. president on war. So they organize themselves as if it's a war. They use the Defense Production Act to order these things like weapons, yet they're telling to the public it's a health event. Stay home, you know, get vaccinated, this kind of stuff. So that's the biggest lie. It's that them misrepresenting wars to us as if it's health event. So usually they have these measures when they, when they order and mm -hmm. produce weapons. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you could have the... Uh, the uh, clue that this is kind of weapon as yeah. well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But now it's used. And now it's it's misrepresented also as a vaccine. In fact, the um, so well, first of all, these are countermeasures, and it's a very vaguely defined term. Anything can be a countermeasure. If somebody that attacks me, I can pick up a rock and throw it, and that's a countermeasure. Uh, so, and also the way they order it as a prototype countermeasure. Well, a prototype, you can hide a tank, a missile system, a, a navy, and it's all prototypes, right? Uh, and these particular category of things, like gene therapies, uh, which were around since the 90s in development, uh, they are designated as a class of biological weapon, have been by the U.S. government in all of their reports on these matters, and even in the NIH published book on bioweapons, there is a chapter about gene therapies as a weapon. So. Again, my question is, well, they're, they're using their, these are potential bioweapons, they're ordering them as a bioweapon, their use is indistinguishable from bioweapon, yet they're telling us it's a medicine. Mm. So, yeah, <laughs> it's so crazy. So, when when did you start to realize? Was it from the beginning? You, you know, this is wrong. I, from the beginning, what I saw is that they are not produced to good manufacturing practice. So that was to me the big red flag. Because if something is not produced uh, in the pharma, if you are buying aspirin today and then you buying it a week from now, and it's a thousand times different experience, well, that's that's a problem, right? <laughs> And that's how it's how they looked. That's how they looked. So that's that's why I started to well, why are they not doing it? This is a really major set of laws that they're breaking and how is it how is it that they're allowed to do this? That you know kinda led me eventually to find out why. Yeah. <laughs>